Hello everyone, welcome to Radiology Case Review Series. In this video, we are going to look at images of a middle-aged patient who present to emergency department with severe abdominal pain. Clinical team was concerned for bowel obstruction and was referred for CT examination. On the CT examination, we can clearly see the stomach is distended and fluid filled. As I scroll down, we can see dilated fluid filled small bowel loops and we can see an umbilical hernia. Within the hernial sac, we can see little bit of edema and fluid. As I scroll back and forth at the level of the umbilical hernia, we can clearly identify fluid filled dilated small bowel loop abruptly tapering at the level of the hernia. The afferent loop is pinched at the level of umbilical hernia and the efferent loop which is coming out of the hernial sac is decompressed. The distal bowel loops post beyond the hernial sac are all decompressed. The large bowel is decompressed as well. Findings are concerning for umbilical hernia incarceration causing small bowel obstruction. Our patient was assessed by the surgery team who were able to reduce the hernia at the bedside but given patient symptomatology, he was taken to OR. At surgery, they found umbilical hernia containing strangulated necrotic omentum. The small bowel loop did not show evidence of incarceration or strangulation following mechanical reduction at the bedside. However, at surgery, they noticed that there was severe hemorrhagic changes, serosal sloughing and punctate areas of full thickness necrosis. So patient had short segment small bowel resection and closure of the umbilical hernia with a graft. So our patient had small bowel obstruction due to incarcerated umbilical hernia. This is a nice review article published in Radiographics on abdominal wall hernias. Few salient points from this article. Ventral hernias are due to midline defects which can be seen in the umbilical, para-umbilical, epigastric and hypogastric regions. Umbilical hernias are by far most common type of ventral hernia. With regards to para-umbilical hernia, these are due to defects in the linea alba in the region of umbilicus, usually related to diastasis of rectus abdominis musculature. With regards to complications from the ventral hernia, they can lead to strangulation or incarceration. Imaging studies are required when the clinical manifestations are misleading or inconclusive or for preoperative planning. With regards to bowel obstruction, it is one of the most common reasons after adhesions related to prior surgery. Obstruction, as I alluded before, is related to incarceration or strangulation of the hernia. And at the level of transition point on the CT, we can see dilated bowel loop proximal to the hernia and normal caliber or reduced caliber or collapsed bowel loops distal to the hernia as we saw in our patient. Other findings which we can see on CT would include tapering of the afferent and efferent limbs of the hernia like we saw in our patient at the level of hernial defect. Although we did not see in our patient there can be dilated loops within the hernial sac and fecalization of the small bowel loops proximal to the hernia. With regards to incarceration it refers to irreducible hernia which is usually diagnosed clinically. Diagnosis of incarceration is important because this can lead to ischemia if not treated in a timely fashion. Signs of impending strangulation on CT would include fluid within the hernial sac as we saw in our patient, bowel wall thickening or luminal dilatation within the hernial sac. With regards to strangulation, this is related to ischemia due to compromised blood supply. On imaging, we can see closed loop configuration of obstruction with a fluid fill U or C shaped bowel loops and trapped within the hernial sac. Findings of ischemia would include wall thickening, abnormal hypo enhancement or hyper enhancement, mesenteric vessel engorgement, fat obliteration, mesenteric haziness and ascites. Also we can see serrated beak like appearances of the afferent and efferent limbs of bowel loops at the level of transition point. I hope you found this case of small bowel obstruction due to incarcerated umbilical hernia to be interesting and informative. Thanks for your attention.